What's up, Grow Fam? Doug here from Shore Grow Hydro, New Jersey's highest rated grow shop. Sitting here today with two very special guests, Jared and Gabe from New Mill. They're going to be talking about their tour and some secret tidbits that you may want to hear. You know, and, and, when, and when we're out in Colorado, you know, I, the example I use is with deer. And if you are in northwest Colorado eating sage-fed deer, it tastes way different than corn-fed deer. And so that's really where when you start thinking about it on that level, everything that you use and a lot of these elements that people use, you know, outside of nitrogen, because nitrogen exists in the environment, it's pulled from the environment. That being said, there are still hundreds of different sources of nitrates you know what i mean yeah. but most of the other minerals are mined you yeah. know so if something was happening if you're dealing with a rock phosphate in which you're dealing with a rock that's 50 million years old and there was something going on in the paleozoic era you know where there was dinosaurs and all the rest of the stuff that translates into the flavor of what you're cultivating and people can go out and say, oh, MPK, the 17 elements, the ones they use for agriculture are different than the ones that a lot of people source for cannabis. And that's why it's different. So yes, nitrogen is nitrogen and phosphorus is phosphorus and potassium is potassium. And people will go and tell you that the plants don't, don't know the difference. They are correct. The plants don't know the difference, but the but I, but the, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the difference in the flavor, and that's really what it comes down to. And the other thing that's really important that I think a lot of people fail to remember is the fact that when you are getting the flavor from the cannabis that you're smoking, it's not from the biomass. No. It's from the flavonoids and the terpenes, and the you know, and that's what it, and those are in the oils. Yeah. And so right. realistically, we're not biomass farmers; we're oil farmers. We're, we're, we're farming well, the oil. Yeah, and I like to talk all the time about, and well said on, on all that, we like to talk about like, what's the horticultural significant part of the plant? It's oil. We don't talk about a strawberry plant and talk about how big the plant was. We talk about the strawberries and the flavor and of the strawberries. And how delicious the strawberry and was. We don't, give a, we don't give a shit about how big the plant was. A plant could be nothing, but if it's got big, fat, beautiful, or even small little ones, but they're the tastiest ones ever, who cares? Well, right. and, that's, and the thing, you know, like Jenner and I were talking about, it's like the same as that runs we were just talking about. You want to grow whatever you're doing, tomatoes, corn, peaches. You know, I get these amazing peaches down in Central Virginia. You want to grow something that's memorable. You want something where your friends are like, man, you remember that bud you had back in summer of 2018? That shit was fucking crazy. You know, it's funny because I just, we, you know, you see the cannabis industry doing all these different things. And one of the things, you know, I've grown, I've grown in a 10 by 10 room. I've grown 55,000 square feet in one facility, which is over an acre. We're talking, we're talking 2000 square, square foot rooms, you know, and I've seen uh, the range of everything in between. And I've been saying to people for a little while now, the 100,000 square foot facility it's not a thing right now, you know, and I don't know that it will ever be a thing. I think in some capacity, you know, I've likened it to um, the beer industry, but ultimately cannabis, when it legalized in 2015, I'm a statistics guy, I'm a big statistics guy, but when it legalized in 2014, 15, we did a billion dollars worth of sales in the state of Colorado. I think nationally we maybe did like two or three billion. Um, Last year, we did, I believe, $26 billion in sales nationally. Um, so just in that short time, exponentially it's grown. They're saying by 2030, we'll be at somewhere around $49, $50 billion. And what we say is like, look, uh, everybody's got to find a home. You know, everybody's got to find a home. The boat's built, it's in the water. There's a bunch of different rooms and everybody's got to find a home. If I was to liken it to the, to the beer industry, craft beer is 18% of regular beer sales. So if I was to look for my 18% in cannabis sales, 
I think there's a good home for a lot of us. I think, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, room I think you know, and I've, been preaching, lot, yeah, you know? I've been preaching to people like, yeah. be the guy who grows, you know, be one, different, one, make a different cake. Well, one thing that's <laughs> been really great about the East Coast is you see all these guys like you have here and in Virginia and all, you got these guys who've been holding shit down since like the mid 90s. They have like a strain, a silver pearl, or, or some type of thing yeah, that they don't hold. Yeah. Yeah, the Ganny down, down, down in Virginia, that, Virginia you know, like, or, or the Skunk <laughs> VA, but you have all these trains that, realistically, in my opinion, they're going to be making a resurgence once people, you know, people are already getting tired of the perps. Yeah. And I think it's purple, you know, and people are getting tired of that shit. So it's something that's a really beautiful. I, I think what we're seeing, you know, I, I've told a lot of people this. I feel like what we're seeing right now is the golden age of cannabis. You know, there's a lot, yeah, we haven't gotten to the point where it's legalized and you're going to start seeing patents on things. You know, we've gotten to the point where a lot of the people, even though people don't love the pollen chuckers, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that people are pollen chucking, it, uh, they, they got Tom Brady and Giselle. Like, they got winners. You know yeah. what I mean? Because a, lot of the, because a lot of the work's been done, you know? And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of stuff that people are doing that's messed up, but ultimately you're seeing some pretty neat things. And granted, you're seeing a lot of homogenization where everybody's using gelato or they're using runs, but ultimately a lot of people are learning. I think that the evolution of the industry is so fast right now. Yeah. So fast. Yeah. Like it changes. Yeah. You know, we saw, you know, like I said, in we saw the salt revolution where everybody came in with the dehydrated salts and already you see, I got tons of people who are running dehydrated salts and they're like, how do I get New Millennium involved? And then How we put Winter Ruby on top acid. of that yes. consistently. I mean, literally every single day. But again, that's even even trying to take this all you know full circle a bit too. This is all the pieces that we're talking about having put together. If you're really trying to get to what we really like to push, and that's genetic potential, which nobody actually really knows. We just know that's what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. and, and phenotypic expression. We're trying to take whatever whatever genetics are there and express what's what's within her. The line doesn't put things in a headlock, if you will. It really expresses out. It pushes oil. Again, we're oil farmers. We're trying to put on that oil sweater. That Again, that, that trichome head even specifically, that's the horticultural significance of this plant. So to get that and to get those kind of expressions, one, you have to have actually somebody that wants to do better. Right, because there's plenty of people that are okay watering a couple plants in their backyard, maybe putting a little chicken, chicken and that's okay. Yeah. No knock on that guy. Yeah. It's everybody, right? We just our job is to find the customer that does want to really look more towards genetic potential and does want to really push the the expression of their plants, does want to see the color come out. And and going back to that light environment, genetics, grower nutrients, right? If you get all four together, you can see the difference. There are, yes, there's the 17 plant essential nutrients for a plant to grow, reproduce, be an autotroph, create its own food, all that sort of thing. However, two things. One, and I won't even make this argument for too long, but there's more than 17. We just don't have the instrumentation for it. But let's leave that argument out. Fuck it. Let's leave that argument out. Oh, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll leave that one on the table. However, are you trying to tell me that there isn't anything that's plant beneficial? See, that's what would be really ignorant of somebody to think that there's nothing out there that's going to help. No biostimulant of any sort, no bacteria, nothing that's going to actually help push the plant and, 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 and open up the genetics so it's in there. Well, that's a that's a pretty short-sighted thought, isn't it? I, I would agree because out of the like hundreds of millions of species of microorganisms right. that are in our soil. That we don't know shit about, by the way. All the time. We quite literally don't even know what 1% of that number Not even does. Realistically, yeah. Jared yeah. has talked about it. Yeah, probably count them all on, or whatever. Yeah. 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 It's almost nothing. Well, yeah, almost you know, nothing. Yeah, yeah, really. We don't know a lot about really. plants in general. No. Yeah. I, I talk about it right. So, you know, I remember one time I was in a you know, plant physiology class and literally it's like after a month in, you know, we're deep into the shit and it's like there's an end point he goes, and that's all we know. And by the way, that last month, that's all been a guess. We got it. We're educating. Yes. We, yes. Don't, yes. we actually don't have a clue. Uh, we know point A and we know point B, but we don't know how it gets there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So plants are so much more widely evolved and adapted than we are. Again, they're not a trope. They stay in the same place. They never have to move. They can create all its own food. I mean, it's... You know, no human can do that. No, no, no mammal can do that. They're, they're, they were here before us and they truly will be here after us. And you can say the same thing about bacteria in that whole world also. So who are we to really sit here and act like we know shit about that? So what we're literally trying to do is just work with the plant. 
give it the parameters, give it the five basic parameters so that we can get that kind of expression. 